Hi everybody. Um, 2010 was a very interesting year for me, and by far the most interesting thing that happened was that I was invited to join a little website called thatguywiththeglasses.com. Now, when this happened, I was thrilled and I was honored, but as I slowly got used to my new place of employment, I began to notice that my new compatriots and colleagues were reviewers of comic books, anime, manga, video games, cheesy B-movies, cartoons, toys, sci-fi television, and internet fan fiction. And that's when I realized... You all are a bunch of nerds! 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 Worse than that discovery was the realization that come year's end, I was going to have to expose myself as the lamest person on the site. Because you see, I would not be able to make fun of pop music like I do if I didn't enjoy it at least a little, and I feel obligated every year to do a list of the pop songs that I actually really liked. I will say this though, 2010 was the year we made contact with not a lot of good pop songs. You know you love me. I mean, there were plenty of tolerable ones, but stuff I actually liked. L last year, I had to whittle down my top 10 from a much longer list. This year, I kind of struggled a bit to get to a full 10. Now, I could have filled this list out with stuff that was not overplayed pop hits, and if I were to do that, any one of these songs could have made it on here, but quite frankly, I prefer to do it this way. This is my penance for being such a negative nitpicking jerk the rest of the year, and trust me, at points, it's going to be humiliating. So, get ready, everybody, for the Todd in the Shadows Hypocrisy Hour, because I'm counting down... Don't stop the, the top 10 best hit songs of 2010. Number 10. Where I come from isn't all that great. Rivers Cuomo has spent the majority of the decade growing steadily more insane. Put me in a special school. I just don't know what the hell he's doing most of the time. His refusal to write about anything except things no one can relate to has made his lyrics seem either half-assed or utterly bizarre. I'm a troublemaker, never been a faker. One thing's for sure though, he can still write a hell of a catchy chorus. Perhaps he should stick to doing that. Hi, my name is Bob, and I approve this message. Hi, my name is Todd, and I approve this song. I got the magic in me. I got the magic, baby. Every time I touch that track, it turns into gold. Yes, it turns to gold. Newcomer rapper B.O.B. mixed it up with rock stars twice this year. But while Airplanes wore itself out on me pretty quickly, magic was a delight each and every time I heard it. B.O.B. does a great Andre 3000 impression, and he and Rivers make perfect sense together. They both pull off the awesome music superstar thing, even though they're both kind of dorks. And it's such a goofy song, but it's corny in all the right ways. Let's see how many magician jokes he can pull out of his ass. Pick a verse, any verse, I hypnotize you with every line. Even David Blaine had to go and take some classes in. I'll need a volunteer. I see my freak like, what's up, man? What's happening? So come one, come on. Delightful. So remember all you nerds out there alienated by the surface gloss of pop music, believe it or not, even here, there's a place for you too. It's like magic! Number 9 I heard you good with them soft lips yeah, you know word of mouth. The square root of 69 is a sum, right? Cause I've been trying to work it out. Uh, I don't feel like Drake is living up to his potential. Like his main influence, Lil Wayne, he has a bad habit of not having his lyrics connect to each other, and like his other main influence, Kanye West, he's got a tendency to slip into corniness. Also, his deal has always been that he's a rapper who's also a decent singer, but he often doesn't use that to very good effect. For example, let me try and do my impression of his breakthrough hit, Best I Ever Had. And she hold me down every time I hit her up When we get right I promise that we're gonna live it up She make me beg for it till she give it up And I say the same thing every single time I say you the you the best You the you the best You the you the best So yeah, I like the guy, but he frustrates me But when he proves he can really deliver Oh my god, he's so dreamy I better find your love Find Your Love is a rarity, a song by a rapper without any rapping in it. Much like a hard rock band doing a delicate acoustic ballad, Drake wants you to know he's got his sensitive side. 
Aided by Kanye West's best production possibly ever, this song hits me right where most of Kanye's 808s and Heartbreak album didn't, largely because Find Your Love doesn't rely so heavy on the auto-tune. I'm more than just an option. The fact that Drake doesn't really have a strong voice actually works to the song's advantage. Otherwise, Drake's defiant declaration of love might have come off a bit too hard. You know, I'm generally a fan of bombast over subtlety, but this song would have been oversold in the hands of one of today's ridiculous R&B crooners. Oh, Trey songs. How are you even a real person? I think Find Your Love is the most underrated song of the year. You might not agree. But if you don't like Drake, hey, at least you can still enjoy the video because, for reasons I'm not sure of, he dies at the end of it. <laughs> I just gotta see it one more time, man. Bye! Don't stop the Number 8. Hold on that new shit. Niggas like how come? Niggas want my old shit. Ah, Jay-Z. You just gotta respect a guy who's out there still putting out real music at a point in his career where most any of his peers would have stopped caring and started doing crappy family movies. You know, that's admirable. And it's not hard to see why he's still this big. The man is one of the most lyrically dexterous and creatively articulate wordsmiths in hip-hop. Right. No, Jay-Z is the man, and I wouldn't ever say a bad thing about him. I just wish he talked more about his hometown. It was the number one song in the country when the year started. And technically that means I could have also put it on last year's list, but I chose not to. It may be because during my one and only visit to NYC, I got the distinct impression that New Yorkers are kinda up their own asses about being from New York. And when I got introduced to some native New Yorkers, they couldn't stop babbling about how great the Big Apple was, even down to some pretty mundane details. You know, New York has cars. New York has women. I guess I had other issues with it too. Like, take this. If Jesus paying LeBron, I'm paying Dwayne Wade. I could have sworn he just announced he was fixing NBA games. It actually has nothing at all to do with basketball, and the process I had to go through to decode that lyric is so stupid I'm not even going to tell you what it actually means. But I tell you what, the Yankees fan in me can't help but appreciate this. Catch me at the X with OG at a Yankee game. What NYC, the Yankees, and Jay-Z have in common is the absolute knowledge that you are and always will be more important than anyone around you. And that's what this song is about. And that's something I can relate to every day. Jay-Z, better than you. Deal with it. Let's hear it for New York, New York, New York. Number seven. You know, I try to keep it classy up in here. I generally don't make any gross, pervy comments, but... Oh yeah, this does it for me. Come here, rude boy, boy, can you get it up? Come here, rude boy, boy, is you big enough? Take it, take yeah. it, baby, baby, yeah. take it, take yeah. it, yeah. You know, I'm not necessarily talking about how she looks in the video either, although that is nice. I, I don't know what that is. No, this is just a damn sexy song. I, I think this is super hot and I'm not gonna apologize for it. I spend most of my time making fun of pop starlets, I realize, but I, I am still a guy, you know. Cut me some slack. No, no, she's from the Caribbean. She's allowed to sing nonsense. It's just what they do. Of course, when the song came out, it was a little hard to ignore the fact that the last guy she dated was a very rude boy who did a lot more than pull her hair. Believe me, I could write a dissertation on how she's reacted publicly and artistically to that whole ordeal, and I think it's unfortunate that the record executives think that all she should sing about is sex, an idea proven completely wrong by her appearance on Love the Way You Lie, an absolutely fascinating song which, unfortunately, will not be appearing on this list. Take it, take it, baby, baby. Yeah, I put the sex song on here instead. I'm a fave. Number 6 
Number six. Here we go again. 2004 will always be the year of indie rock to me. That, that was the year that Franz Ferdinand, The Killers, and Modest Mouse all unexpectedly took the top 40. And that was also the year of the Arcade Fire, the Yaya yeah Yaz, yeah the Postal Service, the Garden State soundtrack. I don't even like everything I just listed, but for the first time in a while, it felt like the music I cared about was actually starting to matter beyond its own little enclave. And you have to remember that at the time, everyone was waiting for the new grunge, the new musical movement that was going to sweep away all the old, tired bullshit, and it felt like this was going to be it. That didn't happen. And none of those bands were ever that big again, and no one ever came around to replace them. So nowadays, when a vaguely indie rockish song makes it onto the top 40, I know better than to imagine that's going to lead to some major revolution in music or anything. But it's nice when it happens. I gotta admit, the rock snob in me kinda wants to dismiss this song as Killer's Light. I mean, that's what I did with The Bravery, and a lot of The Killer's second album for that matter. But, oh my lord, if you don't listen to the radio, you don't know what a breath of fresh air it was to hear something like this in between the Kesha and the Beaver and so on. It's just nice to know that even now, a retro new wave band with a badly chosen name and a stupid haircut can still make it big in America. I know it's not gonna lead to anything. I know they're not ever gonna have another hit. I'm not even sure I want them to. Just let me have this one-off fluke single and I will be more than happy. Goodbye. Good luck with that next album. Probably never see him again. <clears throat> Number five. <laughs> I hate Katy Perry so much. She's dumb as a post. She can't sing. Every single song she sings is this narcissistic love letter to herself and strains even the limits of pitch correction. And you know what I hate about her the most? She keeps making songs I like. We'll be young I heard I kissed a girl in 2008 and I vowed to hate her forever. But my vow has been sorely tested by the fact that I really loved Hot and Cold, I really loved Waking Up in Vegas, and though I had many, many problems with it, I could not really bring myself to hate on California girls either. I guess you could call it a guilty pleasure, but shame is a better word for it. And I thought Teenage Dream might break that streak, but I don't know what to tell you, it, it wore me down. It's just an exceedingly well-written, well-structured pop song. And to be fair, that may be because mega-producer Dr. Luke is good at making even Katy Perry's occasionally horse-like voice into something listenable, as well as making a musically interesting song out of a single three-chord riff. The idea of Katy Perry releasing an honest-to-god love song seemed ridiculous to me. And like California Girls and I Kissed a Girl, there's still an element of self-love to this. But still, I think she pulled it off. Out of all the songs on this list, this is the one I expect to survive and still be huge 20 years from now. And I have to stop, because if I have to deliver more compliments to Katy freaking Perry, I am going to lose all respect for myself. Number four. The music I'm playing in between songs is DJ Earworm's United State of Pop 2010, his annual mashup of the biggest songs of the year. This year he did his best mashup yet, and part of the reason he was able to do that is because the biggest pop songs of the year were all pretty much the same thing. Club dance songs about dancing in clubs to club dance songs. And that's fine, but all that enforced fun gets to be oppressive, especially all the parts about finding love on the dance floor. I prefer my dance songs a little more desperate. Sometimes you don't dance to find love. Sometimes you dance for the same reason bar flies drink, because everything sucks and you've had a lousy week and a lousy life and God damn it, this is all you have, so leave me alone! Yeah, I prefer those kinds of dance songs to quote unquote fun dance songs, but hey, you know what? Sometimes you can use a little of both.
Usher's best song in quite a long time. DJ Got Us Fallen In Love won me over simply by daring to go where most songs in this genre generally don't. I feel like a zombie gone back to life. Unusually morbid in both imagery and tone, DJ Got Us Fallen In Love presents us a world where the dance floor is not just the only place where feelings like love and fun and happiness can be felt, it's also the only place where such emotions can even be remembered. I think I remember those eyes, eyes, eyes. While lyrically it may seem like just another song of escape, it's Usher's coiled, frustrated performance and pulsating, uncompromising music that conveys an almost apocalyptic tone, where the ecstasy of dancing is the last refuge of the damned and the broken, all of which combines to make DJ Got Us Fall In Love a truly deep and enriching experience that conveys effortlessly the reality that we must gather rosebuds while we may before the coming storm and must be considered the most important work of our generation. Oh, and that idiot Pitbull is on this! Hear no evil, speak no evil. I hate you, Pitbull. I hate you so much. My life is a movie and you just TiVo. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. What?! Oh my god, you suck so hard, Pitbull. You suck so hard. Pitbull was not enough to ruin this song for me. He was bad enough to knock this song much lower than it would have been. He just doesn't get the perfection and complexity of this modern masterwork. Choose your collaborators more carefully, Usher, and you may go down as the new Shakespeare, sir. Yeah. Thank you, DJ. <laughs> I like your beard. Don't stop the Number three. I swear to God, I feel like all I do on this show is listen to horrendously bad pickup lines. Every time I think we've run out of classless, puke-worthy, quote-unquote, romantic lyrics, another one pops into its place. It just doesn't seem to end. And sometimes I seriously think I'm never going to hear a decent love song ever again. But when you're actually starting to get that cynical, sometimes you have to take a step back and say, Stop. Now think about it. Nothing on you, babe. No, nothing on you. Nothing On You was the world's introduction to three artists who would prove to be unequivocally positive forces of good over the course of the year. Rapper B.O.B., singer Bruno Mars, and pop production team The Smeasingtons, who of course wrote their masterpiece this year with CeeLo Green. That song would have easily been my number one pick for this list if it had been a bigger hit, but unfortunately the mainstream public gets nervous and scared when they hear a naughty word. Gosh. I wish there was some kind of succinct two-word phrase I could use to describe how I felt about this. In the meantime, we had Nothing On You, which possibly could have made it on this list simply by being a song where a guy insists that he's loyal and actually sounds like he's telling the truth. Uh, no, seriously, financial responsibility is so important in a long-term relationship and it's good to see that acknowledged. Everywhere I go, I'm always hearing your name. And no matter where I'm at, girl, you make me wanna sing. You know, it's just been so long since I've heard such a sincere sounding love song on the charts. I mean, so much of this song is just genuinely charming and smack dizzy in love, real love. Tell me, what girl could hear lyrics this genuinely love-struck and this happy and not just be utterly swept off her feet. Lupa! 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 Hey Lupa! 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 What? Take, take, take my order because your body's like a carryout. And, and let me rock it on your body till you hear me. Uh, no, 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 it's not what I meant. It's not what I meant. I, I. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and that's just how we do it. Don't stop the Number two.
I'm sorry. I'm sorry, 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 I am so, so sorry. Greetings, loved ones. Let's take a journey into never taking Todd in the Shadows seriously again. Never have I liked so many songs by someone I have had so little respect for as an artist. I think Katy Perry's persona is absolutely rancid. And listening to any of her album tracks makes me nauseous, and yet, here we are. I said I had problems with California Girls, and I meant it. There are so many things that are absolutely wrong with this song. The narcissism, the awkward rhymes, the way Katie's voice strains to stay in tune. Oh, and let's not forget the embarrassing music video, which is considerably less sexy than it thinks it is. Gross. And then, of course, there's Snoop Dogg's verse, undoubtedly the laziest thing he's ever put on record. All that ass hanging out. Bikinis, bikinis, martinis, no wings, just a king and a queen. He ripped off the slap chop guy. Fettuccini, linguini, martini, bikini. Inexcusable. You could travel also, they misspelled girls, which is bad enough on its own, but apparently the songwriters say it was a tribute to the band Big Star and their song September Girls. And if you know anything about Big Star, you know how ludicrously misguided that tribute is. And there's so much wrong about this song that I seriously considered doing a review of it. And at the end, I would have had to confess that basically I loved this song instantly from the first moment I heard it. Katie, my lady. Look at him, baby. Uh -huh. Just the combination of slap bass and Snoop Dogg and summary disco won me over before I had a chance to even think of any problems with it. And you know what? Shut up! I keep telling people I actually like pop music, no one ever seems to believe me. Leave me alone. God damn you, Katy Perry. God damn you and your catchy, catchy music. My favorite pop song of the year is a country song. Not this one. Yeah, me and country music parted ways a long time ago. And believe it or not, serious confession time, country music was the only music I listened to for a long, long time. Pretty much throughout the era of Garth, roughly 10 years of my life, it was all I listened to. And I still listen some, but it should go without saying that I can't really get into it anymore. Part of it is that now it seems to be populated entirely by pretty boys and teenage girls, but it isn't just that, it's also just the boring, self-satisfied tone of a lot of it. And as I found out, satisfaction and contentment is just not what I listen to music for, especially not country music. As far as I'm concerned, country music should be about one thing. Misery. Misery and drinking. It's a quarter after one, I'm all alone and I need you now. Odd that any big hit song of 2010 came from country music, but yeah, this song makes me put a tear in my beer every single time. Lady Antebellum have an intensity not shared by most of their peers, and their anthem to loneliness and ill-advised hookups puts both Carrie Underwood's white bread blandness and Taylor Swift's giggly adolescence to shame. I mean, this is what country music's supposed to be about. Bitterness, misconnections, and pain, and utter hopelessness. Well, hi, um, I, I probably shouldn't be calling you right now, 
I, you know, I, you, know I, I, you probably think I'm an idiot, and you know, I probably am an idiot. I just, I just, I just wanted, I just wanted to talk to you right now, and because, you know, I just wanted to tell you that, you know, I, you, you always make me, I always really like you because I met you, and you're just so nice, and, and I, I see, I see, uh, all you want could ever want in a girl. I'm just, oh God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Todd, I think you were trying to call someone else. Although, if you weren't, I'm not complaining. <laughs>